welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have King Pasquel. He is a medical student and he wrote the Kevin MD article, Why Medical Students Should Not Let Medicine Define Them. King, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and your journey to where you are today? <laughs> sure. Um, where to begin? So um, I'm a third year med student at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. As far as um, like about me, I'm originally from the Philippines. My family and I immigrated to the United States in 2003 um, to Texas, actually. Um, went to high school here and um, eventually went to college at Brown University in Rhode Island, um, where I majored in, in biology and ethnic studies. And after that, you know, I kind of had a, a little bit of a non-traditional path. It wasn't a straight linear um, path to medical school. I spent two years teaching in the South Bronx through a program called Teach for America. So I, I, um, I taught high school science in, in New York for two years while also getting a master's in education. And then I kind of, you know, um, wanted to explore another field, um, uh, namely the startup and, and healthcare innovation field. So I ended up uh, moving to DC um, for a healthcare innovation fellowship where I spent a year launching a, a, a startup, um, a healthcare startup for stroke patients. And that kind of got me going with the whole medicine as a, a career path. So I, I spent you know a year doing startup uh, work and another year doing another healthcare innovation um, role in DC and then I eventually matriculated at George Washington. Um, so that's where I am now. Excellent. And from your years as a high school science teacher, what are some of the lessons that you've learned there that you could bring forward uh, during your medical education journey? That actually there's, there's a, it's a lot, right? Um, you know, I, it was my first, my first job right out of college and you're thrown in there to really just like learn on the spot and figure out solutions to the many problems that you know the students are facing in the classroom and the, the system as a whole is facing outside of the classroom so I, I think you one of the things that I took away from it is that I had to be comfortable with the discomfort mm -hmm. you know I, I had to like just embrace the fact that there are going to be some some roadblocks there and it's going to be up to me to have that mindset to to find out a solution in a calm and efficient way and that took some time to really practice but that really translated well into, to, for instance, clinical rotations, my third year. You know, you're thrown in there in the wards and you don't know what's going on, but you really just had to be comfortable with not knowing. Mm -hmm. You had to be comfortable with the uncertainty and the discomfort and, you know, trust in the process that you'll, you'll find out a way to, to, you know, accomplish what you need to accomplish. So let's transition now into your Kevin MD article, why medical students should not let medicine define them. Now, for those mm -hmm. who haven't read that article, can you just walk my audience through it and maybe share the story of why you decided to write it? Yeah, so I think it's really borne out by the four years that I, that I um, worked in different fields before matriculating into medical school. And when I wrote that article, it was, I think, the first semester of, 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 um, of med school. And I really had to kind of ground myself and, and tell myself, okay, now you're in med school. You know, you hear all of these people around you already, you know, starting to study for step and it's just like two months in and, and it can, you can get really bogged down by all the, uh, the type A personalities. And, you know, I told myself if I'm, not per if I'm not careful, I can fall into that tunnel vision mentality where I'm just going to do everything medicine and define myself as a med student. And if I you know, don't think of anything else outside of medicine, that's going to be very, very harmful to who I am. And who I am is someone who, you know, is not defined by just one field. I, I, I see value in, in, in you know, um, a, a bunch of things. And I, I thrive in uh, thinking outside of the box. I thrive in, in defining myself in more ways than, than one. And, and I have passions outside of medicine. And I wanted to not lose sight of that because, you know, that's part of the self-care that I think a lot of medical students um, don't really prioritize. You know, you're more than just your exam. You're more than just your test grade. You're more than just a flashcard or a, or a PowerPoint. 
And it's so easy to lose sight of that when you're in med school. So that's, that's, it's kind of like an existential exercise for me almost um, just as much as it was like a public service announcement to, to, to the med students out there. But yeah, that's where it came from. So you wrote that article a couple years ago and now you're in your third year. So what are some examples of some of your interests outside of medicine? Yeah, um, so I mentioned that I worked in startup and I actually launched a sleep hygiene startup about a year and a half ago. Um, I created a, a device that essentially um, prevents you from snoozing in the morning Mm-hmm. and reduces your uh, usage of um, um, your, your mobile phone at night. So it's a lock, it's a modified lock box. I call it Early Birdie, um, the world's first sleep hygiene trainer. And, mm-hmm. you know, over the past year and a half, I managed to um, prototype it using our school's 3D printer, um, manufactured um, 40 samples, um, with a, a manufacturer in China and patented the design. And, you know, I just have it on the side as a little pet project. I answer some startup pitch competitions when they are available. So that's one thing. Aside from that, you know, I'm passionate about music. I upload maybe one or two covers um, on my Instagram every couple of weeks. And, you know, I enjoy cooking mm-hmm. and uh, writing, obviously. <laughs> So a couple of things in the works. So like you said, um, the first couple of years is almost consumed by studying for step ones and, you know, preclinical uh, courses and all that. So I guess the question is, you know, where do you find a time to, to, ha- to run a startup and, and have some of these interests outside of medicine? Because um, just these preclinical years uh, is a so focus on medicine itself. Right. So I I think time is definitely of the essence. And um, at some point, you got to draw the line. Mm -hmm. Um, If you really want to go for, you know, like getting AOA and, 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 um, you know, getting that 260 on your step, then maybe you won't have as much time as I probably did. Um, So I I, I knew what I wanted out of my preclinical years. Um, and, and I, I knew what my limits were and I was comfortable setting those boundaries early on. Um, so I think that's, that's how I found and carved out time Mm -hmm. for myself, um, having realistic expectations. Um, but I mean, I I feel like you can also excel academically and still find ways to, um, excel in your hobbies and, 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 um, you know, be, be more than just a, a exam taker. And I think it just takes some planning Mm -hmm. and um you know and and, and some self-care um like uh mentality and and you shouldn't one should not feel um like all they have to do is 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 study for an exam memorize a flashcard so there's a lot of things that you need to do and take care of now can you give us some examples from your circle or from your classmates and friends of other medical students who are also doing things outside of medicine as well yeah, I mean, I think I'm fortunate enough to be in a medical school where um, there is a culture of, of doing things outside of the classroom. Like, for instance, we have these um, scholarly concentration tracks that you can focus on during medical school. I'm in the integrative medicine scholarly track, but there's also the entrepreneurial track. Um, and there's also um, uh, like community health and global health. And I see a lot of my peers and volunteering in the community. Um, also starting their own um, projects, uh, startup ventures, entering pitch competitions. So I think I can, I can you know, safely say that there's a lot of us in, in, in my med school that are venturing outside of the classroom and, and pursuing interests outside of medicine. Um, but specifically, you know, my closest friends and I would, uh, for instance, have jam sessions and, mm-hmm. and play. Uh, playing piano and pull, pull out their guitars and, and just try to, you know, sing and, 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 and perform whatever song comes to mind. So that's, you know, that's one anecdote I can share. So I want to focus more on that combination between medical school and entrepreneurship. And I talked to a lot of medical students on this podcast and a lot of medical students and physicians have written on my blog uh, about that intersection. Now, 
for those students who have an idea, they want to do a startup and they have a little bit of an entrepreneurial bent, what kind of training or resources can, can they turn to? Because that's the question I get more often is like, you know, where do I start? Um, you know, I, I do want to focus on medicine, but I also want to kind of nurture this idea I have. Yeah. So I think that's a great question. Um, offhand, I can tell you to take advantage of startup pitch competitions mm -hmm. in your university. And if they're not offered in your university, then maybe look um, just regionally because um, they're, they're they're, they're, you know, there's about to be at least one startup pitch competition near you every couple of months. Um, and while it may sound intimidating to enter something like that, it's actually um, not as intimidating. You know, you're there um, in a, a safe space to share your idea. So that's one, one piece of advice to take advantage of those startup pitch competitions. Um, second, um, you know, if there's a course in your university on um, human-centered design or design thinking, I think it's a great, great way to just have a framework and an intellectual framework to kind of um, um, iterate ideas in your head and, then, and come up with a prototype in a short amount of time. Um, in, and design thinking, human-centered design is so translatable to every field, including medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of hospitals and institutions are actually making that as like a part of their either curriculum or just um, overall way of, of improving things in the hospital. Uh, so that's the second piece of advice, advice I can give. And third is to just, you know, uh, one thing that I do is I write down ideas on, the, on, on, on a piece of paper if they come to mind and then I, I type them up later in my laptop and I curate them. Um, so little things like that. That, that, that can really just nurture your entrepreneurial bent, you know, when you said it, yeah, your entrepreneurial spirit. Um, and those are practical things you could, you could definitely do. We're talking to King Pasquale. He's a medical student and he wrote the Kevin MD article, why medical students should not let medicine define them. King, so um, this is the question I always ask uh, medical students and physicians who have interests outside of medicine. There is uh, a subset of physicians who only want their students to focus on medicine and medicine alone and any interests outside of medicine, you know, they won't be considered real physicians in that case. So I guess uh, my question is, what's your response to uh, people who ask you or, or think like that? That's some, definitely something that um, hits close to home. Like I have conversations like this with, with my friends, right? Like, you know, what's the value in, in having someone, a med student, uh, be all over the place and not um, technically skilled in one area? And I want to kind of walk back and, and ask ourselves, well, let's, let's look at the earliest physicians ever recorded, right, during maybe the, uh, the Renaissance. You would, it would be, you would be hard-pressed to find someone who's just doing medicine if you were a physician back then. Chances are, if you were a physician back then, um, you know, you were also a philosopher, mm -hmm. you were also a mathematician, you were also, um, you know, an artist. So I think we've been misled to think that physicians are only supposed to focus on medicine when in fact, you know, since the beginning of the profession, what made medicine medicine is, is the combination of different fields. And, you know, I, I think we need to go back to that mentality where, medicine actually will be more progressive if you have different perspectives contributing to the table. And it's, it's um, more productive for us as, as physicians to welcome different mindsets, different skills, different perspectives and experiences, because that's what medicine made medicine today. Great, and my final question, what's your take home message that you wanna leave with the Kevin MD audience? Um, my take home message would be to really just um, keep a, a big picture mindset when, when you go to medical school and ask yourself, you know, what is it that you want out of, of not just medicine, but out of life? Um, what would make you happy? And as much as possible, avoid having a tunnel vision when you're in medical school. There's more to life than just your onkydex and your your PowerPoints and your lectures. And it's, it's hard to do that when it seems like everyone else is focusing on exams, but you would do yourself a great, great service if you keep a, a big picture perspective on life. Great. King, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. Thank you. And thanks again for being on the show. Pleasure.